Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about beginning to animate the transform properties. There are five standard transform properties. These are properties that we animate all the time, but in fact, there are thousands of things that we can animate in After Effects. But these five, called the transform properties, are, are the basic ones that we use all the time. In this particular tutorial, I'm just going to cover three of them, scale, rotation, and opacity. In the next tutorial, I'll cover position. So I've opened up a new project and I have saved it. So my recommendation is you always save your projects right at the beginning. You keep organized. So I saved my project to a folder that is going to contain all of the elements for this particular project, including my footage and my render. I have also in the projects panel, organized my project panel by creating three folders, 00, zero underscore render comps, 01 underscore pre comps, and 02 underscore footage. Projects can get complicated really quickly and this panel can become a mess in no time. So it's really important that you work in an organized way. So I recommend setting up your folders like this. I use the numbers so that when you click on name, that means you're gonna list this by name it will always keep them in a particular order, which is very handy. And working this way makes your work much more efficient. And also, if anybody else has to work on your project, um, they're going to be able to figure out things much more easily. So the first thing I want to do is I want to import my footage item, which is an element that I created in Adobe Illustrator. So if I want to jump over to Illustrator and show you how that was set up. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. I have used a film and video preset. Let me just walk you through that really quick. So I do command N to create a new document here. Here's film and video. I want to use HD, HDTV 1080. So the actual aspect ratio will be uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now the default is to give you a transparent background. Uh, I prefer to work with a white background. So to change it, you need to click on More Settings, and it's down here. It says Transparency Grid. I'm going to change that to Off, and then Create Document. And now I've got a 1920 by 1080 document here. This has my guides for title and action save, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now jumping back to my, my circles here, uh, it's really important that you put each of the elements you wish to animate in After Effects on a separate layer in Illustrator and you name them appropriately. Then you can import them as a composition into After Effects and then just start animating right away. If everything's on a single layer, it's going to come in as a single flat layer in After Effects, which we don't want. Okay, so I'm going to jump back to After Effects. Click on footage because that's where I want my footage to go. And After Effects calls everything footage. So vector files will be footage, uh, Photoshop images are footage, live action videos footage, audio is footage. If we were bringing in all of those different elements, I would create subfolders in here for each of those types of elements. But in this case, I am just going to import one thing. Select that folder and press Command I and then navigate to my circles. In this case, we're doing circles 2.ai. I want to import it as a composition retain layer sizes. Say OK. Now when you do that, it automatically creates a, a new composition. And I'll double click on it to open up that composition. So this composition is exactly the same size as the Illustrator document. So since I created that at 1920 by 1080, this is 1920 by 1080. If you press Command K, that brings up your composition settings and you can see this comp has been created at the uh, 69 aspect ratio 1920 1080. I have changed the duration or you may need to change the duration to four seconds. The default duration is 30 seconds. But since I previously created a comp in this project at four seconds, it remembers that and it has created this at four seconds. So you could change it here to four seconds, say OK. And I'm going to start animating scale first, but I want to focus just on the large gradient circle. So I want to uh, hide small multiple circles. You can do that two ways. You could click on the eyeball and that will hide it. So click on the eyeball, that shows it. Or you could also in the second column here, right below this circle, 
is uh, that, that's the solo column. So if you click there, it solos that layer and it hides all other layers. So I'm going to do that. And now if I open this up, you're gonna see here's transform and here are the five transform properties I mentioned. We're just going to be working with scale, rotation, and opacity. But before we start animating anything, I wanna make sure that the anchor point is dead center in my each of my elements here. Even though when I created these in Illustrator, I used the align tools to center them in Illustrator, I've had issues before when I've brought things in as a composition, when I started animating them, the anchor point, the point around which the layer is going to rotate, was not exactly the same for both of them, slightly off. For this particular animation, they have to be exactly the same. So let me show you real quickly what the anchor point is. Okay, so I'm gonna take the rectangle tool and I'm gonna create a square here. What you see over here, this is the anchor point. The anchor point by default goes in the dead center of the composition. So if I were to use the rotation, I'll just hit R and I'll rotate this. This object is gonna rotate around that point, okay? So that's not what I want in, uh, in my animation. I want that anchor point to be dead center in the middle of that square. So I'll show you how to do that. What you can do is you can click on your layer and then double click on this tool up here. This is called pan behind in parentheses anchor point. And if you double click on it and that moves the anchor point to the center of the object. If you want the anchor points always to be in the center, then I'm going to go into preferences here, general, and I'm going to check this box, center anchor point in the new shape layers. And say, okay, so now whenever you create a shape layer, it's going to be, it's gonna have its anchor point dead center. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that comp there. I don't need it. I'm gonna jump back into my circle comp. Okay, so we're gonna start out with scale. I'm at the beginning of the comp. I'm going to hit S. We could just open this up and you could see them and I could put a, a keyframe here by clicking this. These, this symbol's called a stopwatch. This is where you click to create your first keyframe. And to have an animation, you always have to have at least one keyframe and then when you move in time and change the value associated with that particular property that's been keyframed, After Effects will automatically create a new keyframe. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. But I wanna show you the quick key, so I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna hit S. S reveals just scale. And then I can click here to make my first keyframe. I wanna show you another way to do that. So Command Z, and I'll close this up. If I press Option S, it opens up scale, but it automatically creates a keyframe for me. I want that to be at zero. So at the beginning, I want scale to be at zero. I also want transparency to be at zero. So option T, that opens opacity and creates a keyframe. So opacity is going to be zero as well. Now we're gonna move forward 10 frames and change opacity to 100. So the quick key for moving forward 10 frames is command shift right arrow. So now I can change this to 100 and it automatically creates a new keyframe. I'm going to move to two seconds. So I'm just gonna drag it over here to two seconds and I'm gonna change scale to 60. And it has created a keyframe. So now when we play it, it fades up and it scales up to 60%. Also, I want this to stay at 100% opacity until I get to uh, over here when I'm going to change it. So I'm going to create a new keyframe, another keyframe at the same value. I need to change the value for it to automatically create a new keyframe. Since I'm not changing the value, I could either select this, Command C, Command V, so copy and paste, or in the far left here, this little diamond, if I click there, that creates a new keyframe at this value. You don't want to hit the stopwatch after you've created your first keyframe, leave the stopwatch alone. If you click the stopwatch, it's going to delete all of the keyframes. And then you got to start over. So we don't want to do that. So now let's move to three seconds. And at three seconds, I'm going to make both of these go to zero. And so here's our animation. It comes up and then it goes back. Okay, 
Now, I want you to go to the beginning, and the beginning of the composition is often called the top or home. So sometimes I'll say go home, and that's because like on the, uh, on the Mac keyboard, you can press the home key, and that will take you to the beginning of the composition. Also, when you're in a, a working studio environment, they often call the beginning of a show or the beginning of an animation the top. So I want you to go back to the beginning, the top or home, and now we're going to show small multiple circles. Okay, so we, now we're at home. I want to move the beginning of this particular layer to 20 frames. So I don't want it to even show up until it's 20 frames. So I'm gonna hold down Command, Shift, and uh, right arrow, that moves 10, and then once again, now that's 20. Now to move the beginning, the end point of that layer, I am just going to press the left square bracket. So that moves it over to 20 seconds. Now I'm going to hold down the Option key and hit SRT. So that reveals scale, rotation, opacity, and creates a keyframe. So at the beginning, I'm going to change all of these to zero. I'm going to move forward 10 frames, and I'm going to change opacity to 100. And then I'm going to move forward 40 frames and change scale to 50. So I'm going to hold Command, Shift, and then right arrow, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's moved me over 40. And change the scale to 50%. Okay, and now I'm going to move to the end of my composition. And I will change scale to 0. And I'm going to change rotation to 2. So it means it's going to rotate two times. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now I want small circles to fade out a little more quickly. I like that they're not doing everything at exactly the same time. I think it's more interesting if there's a little bit of an overlap, but I think it's a little too much. So I'm going to drag these guys. So I'm going to select both of these and pull them over, pull this one over, and let's play it and see how it goes. I actually think the rotation twice, uh, I, I'm not crazy about it. I'm going to change it to one instead. Let's see how that looks. I think that's better. Maybe I'll pull this over a little bit more. So this is how you can fine tune your animation. Adjust your keyframes so it looks the way you want it to. I think this is working fairly well. Now if I had music in here, audio, I would want to time this to my, to my music. And perhaps there's some beats where I would want to have specific things happen. A lot of times we'll put keyframes on beats of music. And then that makes the animation appear to be motivated by the music and vice versa. Okay, so I think that's uh, working pretty well. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, what I'm going to do is create my final render comp up here. Circles is going to be a pre-comp. A pre-comp is really a comp that gets nested into another comp. So I'm going to move the circles into uh, pre-comps, and then I'm going to click on render comps and create a new composition, and I'm going to name this. Of uh, This one should be the name that you want when you render the comp. So um, I'm going to call this one transform. Basically, I'm going to name it the same as I named my project underscore rotation scale and opacity. Okay, and now I'm going to take circles to and drag it in here. The reason I'm putting it, nesting it inside this comp is because I want to apply an effect to all of my animation. And I'm going to apply the uh, CC Collider. So if you go over to the effects and presets, you can just start typing in Collider, and you're going to see CC Collider appear. So if you double click on it, that adds the effect. And you can see it's really kind of fun. And there's a lot in here you can play around with. We've got all these properties we can animate.
And if you wish, you can duplicate the layer by just pressing Command D and then offset it, and you'll get a um, you know a more interesting sort of result.